everyone! Thank you for tuning back in to Sleuths Investigate. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering a cold case from 1995. This upcoming March, this case will be 25 years old. Please let us know what your thoughts or theories are surrounding this case, and also don't forget to like and subscribe. Deanna Jean Kremen was born on March 26, 1978, to Catherine Kremen and Albert Rogers in Cambridge, Massachusetts. She had two sisters and eventually two younger brothers, which she was very protectful of. She was a popular girl who was full of life and very ambitious of her future. When Deanna was really young, her parents went their separate ways but remained civil. In the early 80s, Catherine married Michael Kremen and the girls became very close to their stepfather. Most described Deanna as a sweet girl with an infectious smile who was respectful to everyone she crossed paths with. Her favorite color was purple, and her favorite holiday was St. Patrick's Day. She loved drinking Pepsi, hanging out with her friends, shopping, and eating sour pickles. It was noted she could eat six slices of Leon's pizza in one setting. Standing at five feet, two inches tall, the beautiful blonde with big green eyes couldn't stand her small stature, but her magnetic personality and big heart made up for that. Deanna was a junior at Somerville High School. She excelled in her studies and worked with third graders with the child development program at her school. Her dream was to one day become a nursery school teacher or a social worker and help troubled youth. She was very compassionate towards children. She was also the neighborhood's favorite babysitter. She volunteered at Somerville Cable Access Television and in January of 1995, she accepted a part-time position at the Star Market Supermarket to become a cashier. On March 26, Deanna, friends, and family gathered to celebrate her 17th birthday with cake, pictures, and presents. Deanna got a pager from Catherine, which she was really excited about. Sadly, this would be the last birthday Deanna would get to celebrate. On Wednesday, March 29th, Deanna went to school and did her last homework assignment. It was a motivational assignment that had her list her goals that were most important to her. One goal that she listed that really stood out was to live a long and healthy life. In the early hours of the evening, Deanna and Catherine rode on a bus from Boston to Broadway near Somerville. Deanna went to Tommy's house, which was her boyfriend. The pair had dinner together and watched television. Knowing she had a 10 p.m. curfew, Deanna called her mom to inform her she was gonna be running a little late. Around midnight, Catherine got a little worried and called Deanna's pager, but she never received a call back. Catherine thought maybe Deanna fell asleep at Tommy's house, and eventually she went to bed. Early the next morning, Catherine phoned Tommy's house, telling him to send Deanna home, because she had school. Tommy explained he walked Deanna halfway home the night previously, leaving her at Heath and Bond Street, and he returned to his apartment shortly. After the call, a very worried Catherine got ready for work and told her husband to phone the school to see if Deanna made it there when class was in session. Around 8 a.m., two neighborhood girls that Deanna babysat were walking to their elementary school and decided to take a shortcut. They walked behind a senior housing building on Jake Street and sadly discovered Deanna's beaten body. The autopsy report revealed she had been strangled and sexually assaulted. She had broken bones, bruises, and her clothes were partially on. According to officials, it looked like there had been a struggle. The community was shattered to hear the news that Deanna was murdered. Nearly a thousand people attended Deanna's funeral at St. Polycarp Church. The church was so packed that people were standing elbow to elbow for the services. Outside, one student blared, Only the Good Die Young by Billy Joel from their car stereo. Law enforcement stated they interviewed around 100 people in Deanna's case. The first person questioned was Deanna's boyfriend, Tommy. Nothing came of that as far as him being a suspect, but about two months after Deanna's murder, Tommy's mother took out a restraining order against him because he was having serious mood swings and a bad temper. The second person was a local firefighter that had taken an interest in Deanna. Her and her friends would walk past the fire station while walking home from school, and that's how she caught his eye. This unnamed person was more than twice Deanna's age and was very fixated on her. It was noted he was questioned by officials, but nothing ever came of an arrest. The third person was an adult male who is now serving time for rape at the Massachusetts Correctional Institution. 
He denied the killing of Deanna, but had no reservations on stating what he would have done if it was him that had actually killed Deanna. The fourth person law enforcement has actually never been able to question. Around the time of murder, witnesses had seen a white 165 pound male between the ages of 40 to 45 years old and about five foot nine walking near the area where Deanna was found. Officials have stated he is not a suspect, but they do want to bring him in as a witness. Many family members and friends have fought to keep her memory alive by dedicating a street and a playground in Deanna's name. They have not given up hope and have continued to fight for justice for Deanna. Sadly, Deanna's stepfather and sister have since passed away, never knowing who did this to her. Even with a $70,000 reward, her case is still cold. This March 30th, 2020, will mark 25 years since Deanna was taken too quickly. If you have any tips or information in Deanna's case, no matter how small it is, please call 1-617-544-7167.